Today is the day that I'm terminating my cover crops. This bed behind me here, you will see that there is what looks like weeds growing in my garden bed. I did that on purpose. Cover crops are a group of plants that sole serve purpose is improving soil structure and soil health. There are so many benefits to growing cover crops, especially in your winter season when your soil might be left bare or you might just throw some mulch on. Instead, adding a cover crop mix will improve your soil through the winter months in preparation for spring. The particular variety of plants that I have growing in these beds are um, ryegrass, Austrian winter pea, hairy vetch, and clover. Something like the winter pea would be something that if I let it go to flower and then it and then let it grow pods, I could harvest those pods and eat them. So I get a lot of questions from people that can their cover crops be dual purpose in that they can eat off of the cover crop as well as having it improve the soil. And sadly, that is not possible. When the plant goes from flowering into producing seed, in that process, it actually removes the nitrogen from the soil up into the let's say the pea pod of the plant. And so you lose the nitrogen benefits in the soil. Now, if you were to pick that pea pod and chop and drop it directly back onto your soil, then yes, you would get the nitrogen benefits back into the soil. But if you're then taking that pea pod and eating it yourself, you're basically eating the nitrogen that was in the roots. So this is why we terminate our cover crops before they go to seed. It is great if you can get your cover crops to come to a flower stage and then chop them. I wanna make sure that I have enough time then for these cover crops to start decomposing before I have to start planting in these beds. So I'm gonna have to chop these before they really go to flower. In the past, my go-to was uh, chopping these down and then tilling them into the soil. And although it worked really well, I have since learned how um, damaging tilling is to the very fragile ecosystem in your soil. Rather than disrupting my soil, today I'm going to be doing two different methods of terminating my cover crops that does not involve tilling. Tilling your cover crop to the soil is very commonly done in the farm industry. And if that's something that you want to do, it is an option for terminating. The first method of termination that I'm gonna be trying is called crimping or rolling. Now in big farm industries, they have big machines that will do this and I don't have that. So I'm literally gonna be taking a board and just crushing these down as much as I possibly can, trying to bend the stems and all in the same direction, creating this really thick mat that is like a mulch layer. This is a great one to do if you're feeling just really, maybe some anger built up inside. You just need to get it out. That ended up being a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. Because I'm a little hesitant that this might just go ahead and just try to grow back, I'm going to be covering part of this bed with cardboard and part of it I'm going to leave bare and see how it does. Um, and the reason I'm covering cardboard is to basically smother and suffocate the plants and so that um, it will hopefully speed up that decomposition process. I know of some people who have used clear or black tarps and that is a very fast way to start that decomposition process, especially if you have a timeline and you need this to be done by a certain time, then that might be your best bet. I just wouldn't keep the tarp on for more than three weeks because at that point it could start actually um, inhibiting the microorganisms within your soil. Another method of terminating your cover crop is to let winter kill your cover crop. If you live in, in, in a climate that has very harsh cold winters, it may automatically kill your cover crop and then there is nothing you really need to do except maybe you could add some compost on top of it and then plant right into it. For this bed here, I'm going to be chopping it with these head shears. This is what uh, I found. Uh, you could also use an actual lawnmower or um, a weed whacker. One, any of those will work just fine. I just happen to have these on hand. I'm going to give them a try. I'm going to cut as close to the root ball as I possibly can and then leaving it all on there as a way to um, kind of smother itself uh, and it's creating this really thick mulch. This is what it looks like when it's done. I'm out of breath. Probably would have been a lot easier if I had a weed whacker. But I want to show you how this is a thick, thick layer of mulch, basically, that is now going to smother the plant. So technically, I shouldn't need to cover this, that this will be enough to smother them so that they won't continue to grow. But I'm still going to cover part of my bed with cardboard just to be safe and, and to compare, see how they do. So here's where we are at. 
In this section of my crimped slash rolled bed is covered with cardboard. That we're gonna see how it does. And then this is the one that I chopped that section there we're going to see how it does without being covered and here we're going to see how it does being covered have to add a few rocks probably add one more piece of cardboard there but in general these beds are set and we're going to come back and check on these in three to four weeks fast forward three to four weeks and this is what our beds look like i've decided to show you what the cover crop looks like in different stages because i've seen when i've watched other videos that talk all about cover crops um, they, if the, I feel like the termination method and how to plant in these, there, it's oftentimes kind of skipped over. We talk a lot about the planting and why to plant, but how do you actually prepare your bed for planting once you've had a cover crop in it? I am playing with a lot of different methods to see what works for me. I've come to a couple conclusions. The first one is that ryegrass is really difficult to kill. Knowing this, in my future plantings, I am not going to plant winter rye because I'm finding that it's more difficult to terminate, at least in the methods that I'm using now. In the past, when I've terminated my cover crop, I always tilled it into my soil. I am trying to avoid that this time around, knowing that tilling our soil over and over does have negative effects on the soil ecology. So in my efforts to not till this cover crop in, I did two different termination methods and tried smothering them with cardboard and let's talk about what we're seeing here. So this is the bed that I tried doing a crimping method where I would smash it. And I, one thing I noticed, this is the section that was not smothered. And as you can see, this winter rye is trying to still grow. This part that was smothered looks pretty good. I did end up uh, chopping this whole section because it seemed like it wasn't dying fast enough. So I've realized in my home garden, the crimping method may not be the best method for terminated cover crop. So I went ahead and chopped this um, after having it smothered for a few weeks. And then I put the cardboard back on to smother it a little more. So the cardboard was probably on here for about three to four weeks max. And as you can see, we have this nice mulch that we can plant right into. And look at the soil, look how healthy that looks. It's been wet, but I wanna show you, oh, there's even a worm there, how nice and loose the soil is, how dark it is. It looks really great. Say hi. This section over here, this is the one that I chopped. And I, as you can see, once again, this grass, ryegrass is still trying to come up. So, um, I had my husband weed whack this area to chop it again and it's still trying to grow back. Now, if we lift the cardboard up on this area though, check this out. This is looking much, much better. When plants are smothered, they get this really light color here. So a couple things is that um, it seems like the crimping method is not a great method for the home garden at least. Um, and it seems like chopping is the best method and it may take a couple chops if you have something very tenacious like ryegrass. So it might be smart to choose something that terminates a lot easier such as peas, clover, even buckwheat. And observation number three is that smothering really does seem to help the decomposition process a lot faster. If you have a lot of time on hand, maybe you can go ahead and not smother it and just leave it to die. And you may have to chop it a few times, but over the, t over the period of a few months, it will slowly uh, decompose. But if you wanna speed that up, it seems like smothering is the best process. So if you have about a month until planting time, you definitely need to smother. So now what? What do we do with these beds now that we've smothered them, we've chopped them a few times, um, we're not gonna be tilling it in, how do we plant into these? You can just move the mulch aside and plant directly in the bed and just leave the cover crops chopped up as your mulch. Another thing you can do is if your soil still seems a bit compacted and it's hard to uh, plant into, you can do something, a very low till method that would require something similar to a broad fork or in my case i have a um it's like a pitchfork but it's not a pitchfork and you can just very gently wiggle that into the soil to just loosen it a little bit the last thing you can do is add your soil and compost directly on top of this cover crop and plant into that and that co that compost or soil will continue to smother the cover crop 
and although it's not tilled in, the cover crop will decompose underneath those layers. So it's a kind of a compost in place Yay! system. So I hope that this video has been helpful and if it has, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you in the next video. Go out and grow something. God bless.